It was great to hear from Charlie Crist. He is the first to enter the race for Florida governor, but some of Florida's highest ranking Democrats are making some moves. And one is Congresswoman Val Demings of Orlando. This week she put out a very slick video showing the arc of her career on the very same day that Chris announced as a candidate. Demings is a rising star in Democratic politics. Will she run? I asked her that question late this week. You know, Michael, I am not sure yet. I am seriously considering a statewide run. Of course, I'm talking to with my family still talking to uh, some friends and supporters, talking to consultants and people around the state. Many have asked me to run for governor. Many have asked me to run for, for the Senate. I'm still in the process of making a decision. I know I need to make this decision, but I'm going to, you know, make it with all of the information that I need so I can better serve other people of Florida. Congresswoman, uh, you are a woman of many firsts. Um, I mean, you are, I think, maybe the first college graduate uh, in your family, you were a police officer, then you were police chief of Orlando, and now you are a member of Congress. Uh, we saw it four years ago, or two years ago rather, that in the state of Florida, that voters were willing to vote for a black candidate. Andrew Gillum nearly won. Do you think that your race or gender in any way is a hindrance uh, if you should decide to run? You know, Michael, thank you so much for bringing up uh, my upbringing. I was born and raised in Florida. Uh, my mother was a maid and my father a janitor. I grew up poor, but my mother always really drilled in me that, you know, don't be defined by simply your race or your gender. Don't be defined by what people may tell you that you cannot do. Be defined by your ability to work hard and play by the rules. And I've just taken my mother's words to heart, really throughout my life. And so what I believe Floridians are looking for, just like the people in Congressional District 10, they're looking for people who really genuinely care about the issues that they worry about every day. They're looking for people who genuinely understand the issues that they struggle with because I've had struggled with those same issues, struggling to make ends meet, struggling with racism, sometimes struggling with gender bias. And so I think Floridians want the most competent individual who understands their struggles and is committed to doing something about them. Yeah. Uh, uh, Congresswoman, as you well know, on Thursday of this week, Governor Ryan DeSantis went to West Palm Beach to what essentially was kind of a pro-Trump, pro-Santis rally and on Fox News signed this uh, new election reform bill, which he says is going to be make elections have more integrity in Florida. And a lot of other people, perhaps you, are saying this bill amounts to voter suppression. How do you see it? The bill amounts to voter suppression, and, and Michael, it is extremely disappointing. Look, you know, I was always taught that you don't have to lie, steal, and cheat to win. All I want, ever wanted, was a fair opportunity to do so. We know that voting is one of the most precious rights. I remember my parents, the maid and the janitor, no matter how long the day's work was, they would always make it to the polls. I cannot remember a time that they did not vote. And that's because they clearly understood that their vote leveled the playing field, that their vote mattered as much as the richest man or woman in town. And so the bill does amount to voter suppression. And it's interesting, last year, the governor said that Florida really um, process was a model and other states should follow it. So clearly, if Florida's system was a model just a few short months ago, yeah. why are you changing it in a significant way now? The governor is has a solution and is running around looking for a problem. You know, and I also am reminded, as a police chief, I certainly did my share of press conferences. And, I, you know, I can remember some, some controversial issues that we had to talk about. The public, no matter how painful it was sometime, had the right to know. Imagine if we had a controversial issue at the police department and I chose one station 
one media source to come and cover it, who was my friend. There is no way Orlando would have let me get away with that. The nation or the or the state would have let me get away with that. Yeah. And so the public has a right to know. Uh, the governor made a decision to uh, only give it to his friends so they could tell his story the way he needed it told. Yeah, well, Fox is his uh, mouthpiece, as it were. It's where he often goes. Uh, you know, Congresswoman, let me ask you, given your, what, 26 years, you were Orlando police officer, then chief for uh, four or five years. Uh, I want your opinion about this new anti-rioting bill that the legislature passed and the governor uh, is going to sign, or maybe he's already signed it. Um, you know, it would impose really stiff penalties on people who are in the streets, even people who perhaps were not violent, but who got caught up in a violent demonstration. They would be subject to some uh, third degree felony charges, staying in jail until a magistrate was available. Uh, what is your opinion of this anti-rioting bill? Well, you know, we know that a person's uh, ability to demonstrate, to participate, and peaceful protest is one of the fundamental rights of this country. As a 27-year law enforcement officer, I've had an opportunity on multiple occasions to work demonstrations involving groups like the Ku Klux Klan, involving groups like the neo-Nazis and others. And what I clearly understood, Michael, is while I did not, certainly did not always agree with the group's philosophy, as a sworn law enforcement officer, I certainly agreed with and supported their right to demonstrate, their right to freedom of speech. And again, I think it's absolutely shameful that the governor would create this anti-protest bill that will basically say, if you're there, you're a peaceful protester, you are doing it right, then you can be caught up and held accountable and penalized, even arrested, um, for those who may be engaged in, in wrongdoing. And then to insinuate that it's okay to drive through the crowd, perhaps. Look, we have some painful memories just a few years ago in Charlottesville right. of someone, a murderer, driving through the crowd and, and, and killing a young woman. And so here again, I think this bill has racial overtones. I think it's absolutely shameful. When I read it, I'm reminded of the saying, when the looting starts, the shooting starts, mm -hmm. targeting a specific group of people. And uh, I think the governor who is responsible for representing all Americans, all Floridians, sorry, all Floridians, also responsible for protecting the basic rights guaranteed by the constitution of this country should be ashamed of himself when he creates laws, signs laws that really restricts and in some instances totally takes away those rights. Yeah. A representative, we have about a minute left. Uh, you are extremely well known in Central Florida. You have had a very successful career there uh, in law enforcement now as a member of Congress. You are frankly not so well known in the rest of the state. I mean, I'm very glad we're having this uh, conversation this morning because a lot of people in South Florida will get their first impression of you. But, you know, to run a statewide campaign, takes a lot of money as well as will. Uh, will you have enough money if you run? Well, you know, Michael, I believe in taking care of home first, right? And there is a scripture that says, if you are faithful with a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. Should I decide to run statewide? then it is my job, and you're right, it's going to take a lot of money if I do that. But it will then become my job and my team's job to take the work that I have been so dedicated and committed to here in Central Florida and, and, and tell that story in the northern part of the state. I was born and raised in Jacksonville. I went to Florida State University in, in, in North Florida, uh, in Tallahassee, of course. But it will be my job and my team's job to go come to South Florida and tell my story for the voters and give them a glimpse of what the future will look like by somebody 
who has done the work. You know, my husband likes to say the best indicator of future performance is to look at past performance. Mm -hmm. I've dedicated my life to public service. And I do believe if I make the decision to run, I'll have the resources to do so. And I can't wait to visit you <laughs> in South Florida. We would look forward to that. Representative Al Demings, great speaking with you. Thanks very much. Thank you.